we have a tradition of identifying with Atma, and Atma is gender free. And so we have the ultimate in equality in terms of a statement. We do not identify an individual by whether their reproductive organs are inside of their body or whether they're outside of their body, if that's not too graphic a, uh, a description. And so we have the capacity to take that knowledge much, much further, and the world does need to hear this. Those who don't know what they don't know will never learn it unless it's given to them by somebody who does know. Can I take on the child marriage issue? It's really another gross distortion, if you'll allow me. You can dele delete you have, it. You have two and a half minutes, Madhuri. Choro. Please. It's an important issue. Okay, you can edit it if you find it not worthwhile. But to share it with this audience, um, we forever uh, shown as a society where girls are married off, children as, as little kids, child marriage is rampant, etc. Firstly, the figures show that the number is very small in terms of percentages. More importantly, even there, the betrothal may take place very young, but the gona, which is the actual cohabitation, starts only much after puberty. But that's not all that there is to it. The societies that keep accusing us of uh, marrying off girls young, etc., need to do, I think we need to do reversing of the gaze. Mm -hmm. Namely, teenage sex is rampant all over the West. And it's a fact, for example, even in England, where teenage mothers, unwed mothers, have become such a volatile social problem because they're not able to take care, unlike here, for example, where if a girl in a teenage is married, she's married into a family, she has a whole support system to take care of children, but a teenage girl getting into a relationship, having multiple partners, ending up pregnant, ending up having kids, Having then to bring up the kid all by herself, while she may herself be un too unstable to do it, it's a very serious problem yes. in England, in America, and which is why they're actually lowering the age of marriage to even 14, 15, just so that um, these girls who get pregnant, um, if they can persuade the man who impregnated them, uh, you know, can at least get married and make a family together. Now, any sensible person would say, an unwed teenage mother handling it all by herself is much more at risk than a wedded teenage girl. And especially if she has a supportive family around. Now, I'm not at all arguing in favor of early marriages, teenage marriages. I chose not to be married at all. And I think it's a great way of life. Uh, and our society respects people who give up grasta ashram altogether. So it's not out of marriage obsession that I'm suggesting this. The point that I'm trying to make is this, that early marriages take place again typically in areas which where violence and unsafety are serious features. In, for example, many of the tribal societies, the percentage of women who never marry, or where, where it's safe to move around. So the real problems are law and order, or as I said, our history of invasions. Low, um, low age of marriage, again, is, is typical of areas which witnessed invasions. And i like to end this with a quick story about my own mother's life. She grew up in Peshawar. And when they used to go to school there or college, even the Tonga, because it was Muslim dominated, very unsafe, girls used to be abducted. It was a very uh, unsafe area. And even the Tonga they used to travel in used to be covered with a thick chadar. And I've seen pictures of my mother as a schoolgirl wearing a thick chadar. This, as soon as partition happened and they came to India, and even though they settled in a so-called Muslim majority area at that time as refugees, within days, the chadar was gone, 
my masis and my mothers were wearing dupattas of this kind or not wearing dupattas they were riding cycles they were going alone for night shows they were doing their shopping all together overnight it vanished it's the same family which had to behave in a certain manner in a certain environment and that taught me a lot which is the majburis of our society you know as i said the law and order situation the violence what kind of uh, social pathologies you live with we have converted them into as though they are inherent flaws of our society and um, especially when we compare to the west let's please th those havens of freedom of uh, much less support to women especially working women here a working you know one of the reasons working women in india have high trajectory they they rise high in their professions is because they can count on mother in law aunt dadi nani several relatives to take care of those kids they are not doing it all by themselves and in societies where women have to be all alone taking care of kids that's where they have to take long breaks that's where they go batty trying to combine work life with and you know many decide not to have children etc so we need to actually reverse the gaze enough of being lectured by people who can barely manage their own affairs well thank you madhuri <laughs>